بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله الحمد لله نحمده ونستعينه ونستغفره ونؤمن به ونتوكل عليه ونعوذ بالله من شرور أنفسنا ومن سيئات أعمالنا من يهده الله فلا مضل له ومن يضلل فلا هادي له ونشهد أن لا إله إلا الله وحده لا شريك له ونشهد أن محمدا عبده ورسوله أرسل الله تعالى بالحق بشيرا ونذيرا داعيا إلى الله بإذنه وسراجا منيرا فما بعد فقال تعالى يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله حق تقاته ولا تموتن إلا وأنتم مسلمون وقال يا أيها الذين آمنوا اتقوا الله وقولوا قولا سديدا يصلح لكم أعمالكم ويغفر لكم ذنوبكم وما يوتع الله ورسوله فقد فاز فوضا عظيما فقال نبينا محمد صلى الله عليه وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم إن أصدق الحديث كتاب الله وخير الهدي هدي محمد صلى الله عليه وسلم وشر الأمور مهدثاتها وكل مهدثة بدع وكل بدعة غلالة وكل ضلالة في النار My dear respected brothers, sisters, elders, I want to begin by making dua for all the Muslims who are ill and sick for their complete health. Shifa Kamila Ajala, inshallah, in particular for the son of one of our brothers and the father of another one of our brothers who are both in hospital. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to cure them completely and totally and bring them back home safe and sound soonest, inshallah. My brothers and sisters, I remind myself and you that the most important thing in life is not wealth or action or knowledge or even action. The most important thing in life is attitude. With the right, with the right attitude, you can create wealth, you can acquire knowledge and find the motivation to act. Without it, you may have wealth and fame and influence and knowledge, but you despair. And if you don't believe me, search for celebrity suicides on Google. And you will know that the difference between a dream and a nightmare is a very fine line. It's not because of wealth or knowledge or fame or power. Today as we stand here and we talk that the Palestinians are unbeatable. It is not for these reasons that they pick themselves up from every disaster which would have destroyed any other people. It is because of attitude. It is attitude that enables totally traumatized Palestinian children to still smile and play games while the world watches in amazement. And Alhamdulillah, this applies to Muslims <coughs> everywhere. <coughs> the attitude of the Muslim is not simply submission but to submit joyfully. And that is the title of my khutbah, the joy of submission. To want to submit, to love to submit, to live to submit, to submit to the one who created us and blessed us in ways we cannot even count, who protects us from all evil, who tests us and helps us to pass the tests and rewards us in this life and even more in the next, and we ask this from him, Jalla Jalaluhu. To submit joyfully to the only one who is worthy of worship, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the glorious and magnificent. To submit because and as evidence that we trust him, Jalla Jalaluhu, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We trust him to know and to do what is best for us. To submit knowing that what is with Allah is better than what is with us. To submit to demonstrate our allegiance to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through his messenger Muhammadu Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam. The only two connections that will go with us when we die. Every other connection ends here on this earth. There are only two that will go with us when we die. The connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala Jalla Jalaluhu and the connection with which we will be called when we stand before Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala 
not as Ibadullah, but as Ummat of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be our identity when we meet Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we will be called by it on that day. Islam therefore is not only to submit but to want to do it and to find joy and fulfillment in doing it and to do it proudly as a sign of our identity which we don't hide but display as we display famous brands. <clears throat> that is why for a true Muslim to submit is not a struggle at all. It is what he or she loves to do. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us about the one who submitted joyfully. Ibrahim alayhi salam. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, إِذْ قَالَ رَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ إِذْ قَالَ لَهُ رَبُّهُ أَسْلِمْ قَالَ أَسْلَمْتُ لِرَبِّ الْعَلَمِينَ When his Rabb ordered him submit, he says, I have submitted to the Rabb of the worlds. He didn't ask for time. He didn't hesitate. He didn't say, I have to think about this. Let me sleep over it. I will submit if it makes sense to me. <clears throat> I will submit if it seems logical or politically correct or whatever. He said, I have submitted. We submit because we trust Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that trust produces complete peace of mind. Sukoon ul qalb. Itminal ul qalb. A total absence of fear. <clears throat> because we know who is in control. When we submit, our will is superseded by the desire to please Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that is why the slave has no will of his own. He wants for himself whatever his Rabb wants for him. As one of the scholars said, <clears throat> the love of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the purest and the greatest of all loves. It gives life to the heart. <clears throat> it is sustenance for the soul and it is the roadway to eternal success. Love is the road to Jannah. It is the main reason why we worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and it is the only way to live a true meaningful life on earth. I remind myself and you that this love is a gift. It is the reward of submission. Tawakkul is the reward of taqwa. We make the effort <coughs> to have taqwa and to live with taqwa and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala then grants us tawakkul as a gift which results in complete absence of fear of anything in the dunya if we live with taqwa. There is no hope and there is no tawakkul for the one who has no taqwa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from his tests. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested Ibrahim alayhi salam time after time after time. Place yourself as a spectator of this scene. The whole town has gathered to see the one they hated being burnt alive because he invited them away from worshipping their creations to worshipping the one who created them. That's his crime. See their excitement and hear their noise as they eagerly wait for events to unfold. The fire that they lit to burn Khalilullah Ibrahim alayhi salam is so huge that they can't get close to it. So they actually need a siege engine, they need a, a trebuchet, a catapult to throw Ibrahim alayhi salam into it. We know the story leading to this event so I won't talk about that. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentioned that the people said, Qalu harriquhu wansuru alihatakum in kuntum fa'ileen. Allah said that they said, burn him up to help your gods if you must act. This is the nature of shirk that you don't even hear your own words. You don't even understand your own words. One suru ali hatakum. Kaifa ila? Wahua muhataj. 
Nusrat Mink. Haji, what is this God who needs your help? It's interesting how people cannot see the powerlessness of the false gods they worship even when evidence of it is clearly visible. Today we worship ideologies instead of stones. Their power, the power of the ideology, like the power of the stones, comes from us. But we refuse to see that. And we, en we enslave ourselves to them. The ideology of commercialism, predatory capitalism based on the interest-based banking system, which drives global poverty, war, suffering, and the enrichment of few at the expense of many. It is in our power to continue to support it or to reject it and take back our power. But shaitan has convinced us that it is possible to accept war with Allah and His Rasul وسلم, as our enemies and yet make dua which will call down the forces of angels to help us. The contradiction of this doesn't strike us. How can your enemy help you? Find me an enemy who will help you. So we got to decide who's a friend, who's an enemy before asking for help. <coughs> Living is about making choices. We are free to choose, but every choice has a consequence. If we want to change the consequence, we must change the choice. Dua without changing the choice is worthless. In all the cacophony, you are still there watching this scene, in all the cacophony of the mob being for the blood of Ibrahim Khalilullah, alayhi salam, you look at him. You find him sitting in the cup of the trebuchet, hands and feet bound with ropes, about to be fired into the fire. And at that time, Jibreel salam came to him and he asked him, Ya Ibrahim, do you need anything? Can I help you? I can imagine Ibrahim salam sitting there smiling. Is there even a need to answer this question? Can I help you? He was Khalilullah. He was the one whose submission Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala witnessed and announced for all creation to be recited in salah until the end of time. What does the slave want? He wants whatever his Rabb wants. Ibrahim alayhi salam said, Hasbun Allahu wa ni'ma al -wakil. When Ibrahim salam refused to accept anyone between him and his Rabb, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala directly commanded the fire. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us, Kulna, Ya naru kuni bardan wa salaman ala Ibrahim. Allah said, we commanded, O fire, be cool and safe for Ibrahim. My question to you as a spectator over there, what did you see? What did the crowd see? Did you see Jibreel alayhi salam? Did you hear this conversation? Did you hear what Allah said to the fire? Nothing. You saw and they saw the catapult fired in Ibrahim alayhi salam flying through the air and into the fire disappearing from sight. The crowd is cheering wildly. Job done, he is burnt, apparent success. But we know the truth because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala told us the truth. And this is what we must remember. That the truth is not always visible. Sometimes falsehood seems to triumph. But falsehood can never triumph. As long as the truth is present. Because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, قُلْ جَاءَ الْحَقُّ وَزَهَقَ الْبَاطِلِ Allah said and declare, the truth has come and falsehood has vanished. Indeed, falsehood is bound to vanish. Darkness is the name given to the absence of light. Darkness has no identity of its own. You can bring light, but you cannot bring darkness. 
If you want darkness, you have to extinguish light. As long as light is present, darkness cannot exist, no matter how small the light. So if darkness exists, whether it's in our hearts or in our lives or in our society or in the whole world, what does it mean? It means that light is hiding somewhere. The light is not coming out. A thousand lamps cannot light a single room. Why? Because the lamp doesn't light anything. It is the lighted lamp which lights. You need the lamp to be lighted. That lamp is our kalb. That lamp is our heart. This lamp has to be lighted with the khashyat of Allah. With the hub of Allah. To be demonstrated in the way of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa That is light. That one light is enough to dispel darkness of the, from the world. And that is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala did not send armies of anbiya. He did not send committees. He sent one Nabi. One Nabi to a whole people. Inna arsalna nuhan ila qawmihi. Laysa ila aylatihi. Laysa ila zumalaihi. Ila qawmihi. Whole qawm. One person. Similarly other anbiya. Why? Because one lamp is enough. One lamp is enough. Ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala jalla jalal hu to make every single one of us lamps to light this world and to dispel darkness and to use us in his way where he is pleased with us. Aqul qawli hadha astaghfirullah ali wa lakum wa li sa'il al-muslimin fa astaghfiruh innahu huwa al-ghafuru rahim. Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah, Hamdan Kathir and Kama Amar, Wana Shadwala, Ilaha illallah, who had the Hula Sherikala, who wanna Shadwana Muhammad and Abdu, who were a Sulu. Makala Tala in the Allah of Amala Ikatahu, you sell Luna Alan Nabi. Ya, you had Ladina Aman, who sell Lu Ali, he was selling Mutaslima. Allah Masali Allah Sayyidina Muhammad in Wala Ali Muhammad Kama Solita, Allah Ibrahim, Allah Ali Ibrahim and Nakamidun Majid. Allah Mabarik Allah Muhammad in Wala Ali Muhammad. كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد. My brothers and sisters and elders, I remind myself and you that the key is that those who claim to stand for the truth must be on the truth themselves, not merely talk about the truth while indulging in falsehood. Remember that for du'a to be accepted, it is the one making the du'a that matters, not the du'a. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has the power to grant anything. His power has no limit. If he can bring a pregnant camel out of the rock, if he can cause 12 springs of water to come out of another rock, if he can split the sea and the moon, if he can cause the fire to cool for Ibrahim alayhi salam, let us remember who he did those things for. Obedient people or disobedient people? If the hands that rise to beg Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for protection were raised earlier in acts that he declared to be haram, then what hope is there that those hands will be filled with his bounty? Allah has not changed. We have changed. Our hands have changed. Our lives have changed. Our decisions have changed. Our hearts have changed and we must change back. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tested the Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhim ajma'in. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, Lillahi ma fi samawati wa ma fi l-ard, wa in tubudu ma fi anfusikum au tukhfuhu yuhasibukum bihillah. فَيَغْفِرُ لِمَنْ يَشَاءُ وَيُوَذِّبُ مَنْ يَشَاءُ وَاللَّهُ عَلَى كُلِّ شَيْءٍ قَدِيرٌ 
In Surah Al-Baqarah, you all know these ayat. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala said, to Allah alone belongs whatever is in the heavens and whatever is on the earth. Whether you reveal what's in your hearts or conceal it, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will call you to account for it. He forgives whoever he wills and he punishes whoever he wills. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is most capable of everything. Before I tell the story further, just think about one thing. Allah said, Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. What does this piece of this ayah, what does it do to you? What should it do to you and me? When Allah is saying, Lillahi ma fis samawati wa ma fil ard. Does it include me and you? Allah is saying, you are mine. I am not saying that. I am not saying that. Allah is saying, Lillahi ma fis samawati ma fil ard. Allah is saying, you are mine. And I must still fear somebody. I must still worry about somebody else. I must still fear what happens to me. My Allah said, I belong to him. Hey? My Rabb said, I belong to him. What is the evidence of that? What is the evidence of that in our heart? Do we ask this question when we read the Quran? I know we talk about Tajweed and Lahan and Qirat and this. Alhamdulillah, all good. But do we ask the question? You just read Lillahi Mahfis Samavati Mahfil. What did it do to you? What did it do to you? Your Rabb is saying you belong to him. Does it make a difference? Does it make a difference? In his book, Al-Azbab al-Nuzul, Imam Ali Ahmad al-Wahidi narrates from Ibn Abbas anhuma and others. He said, the commentators of the Quran said on the revelation of this ayah, when the ayah, and whether you make known what is in your minds or hearts or hide, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will bring you to account for it. Yuhasibukum bihillah. When this ayat was revealed, Abu Bakr and Umar and Abdul Rahman ibn Auf and Mu'ad bin Jabal radiallahu anhu majma'in and others all went to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. They fell down on their knees before the Rasul alayhi salam. And they asked him, they said, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, by Allah, no other ayah of the Quran is harder on us than this. One of us, we speak to ourselves. One of us speaks about things that he does not like to remain in his heart. Meaning, the thought coming in his mind, it is coming involuntarily. He didn't ask for this thought. He would not even want this thought. But it is there in the heart. And he would not want it even in exchange for the whole world and all that it contains. And now, we are going to be taken to task. We are going to be punished or questioned about these things that we speak to our own selves. By Allah, we are doomed. Rasulullah said, this is how the ayat was revealed. That is what Allah said. The Sahaba, they said, we are ruined. We have been bound by that which we cannot possibly bear. Rasulullah got angry, his face became red with anger. And he said, are you going to say, as the Bani Israel said to Musa alayhi salam, Samana wa sayna, we hear but we will not obey. We hear but we rebel. He said, Qul say, Samana wa ta'ana ghufrana ka rabbana wa ilayka al masir. Say, we hear and we obey. Now remember, these people came there with a complaint. They came there with a maruda. They came there with a request. That request was not granted. 
they are told, they are commanded, say, we hear and we obey. Did they say, Ya Rasulullah, you know, we really didn't mean it like that. Maybe you misunderstood us. We were not rebelling. This excuse, that excuse. No. They came with that, with something, they asked for it, it was not given to them. What did they do? Nabi Sallallahu said, Kul samayana wa atana. They said, samayana wa atana. Ufrana ka rabbana wa ilayka al -masir. Al-Wahidi says that Ibn Abbas says that this was very hard, extremely hard on them. And they remained in this situation for one year, for 12 months. After which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala sent down relief. Where he said, لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا أسح. Allah does not task a soul more than its scope. Which abrogated the things, the ayah before it. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa said, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has pardoned my community for the things with which they speak to themselves as long as they do not act upon them or talk about them. <coughs> my brothers and sisters, imagine the severity of this test. This is a spiritual test. Imagine how severe that is to live thinking that every thought of mine Allah is going to count and Allah will question me. How do I control my thoughts? How do I control my desires to make all of them obedient to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because I will be punished for my thought and my desire. This is, this is what they got from the Quran, from the ayah and for 12 months, 12 months, can you imagine this? 12 months and some of the sahaba who went there would have died in that period. For 12 months. And it was that training in submission and obedience which molded a generation the like of which we have never seen. The reward of submission is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored them by taking the words of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and sending them back as his own revealed word to be recited in salah till the end of time. And then Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored the sahaba and he taught them to make dua and he taught them what to ask for. What can I say about the acceptance of a dua that is taught by the one to whom it is made, that is taught by the one who accepts it. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the great two, last two ayat of Surah Al-Baqarah, which we have been commanded to recite before we go to bed every night and in the morning. And Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, this will take care of your day and it will take care of your night. Where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed, آمَنَ الرَّسُولُ بِمَا أُنزِلَ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ رَبِّهِ وَالْمُؤْمِنُونَ كُلُّ نَامَنَ بِاللَّهِ وَمَلَائِكَتِهِ وَكُتُبِهِ وَرُسُلِهِ لَا نُفَرِّقُ بَيْنَ أَحَدٍ مِنْ رُسُلِهِ وَقَالُوا سَمِعَنَا وَاطَعَنَا غُفْرَانَكَ رَبَّنَا وَإِلَيْكَ الْمَصِيرِ لا يكلف الله نفسا إلا وسعها لها ما كسبت وعليها ما اكتسبت ربنا لا تواخذنا إن نسينا أو أخطأنا ربنا ولا تحمل علينا إصرا كما حملته على الذين من قبلنا ربنا ولا تحملنا ما لا طاقة لنا به واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا واغفر لنا وارحمنا أنت مولانا فانصرنا على القوم الكافرين الله سبحانه وتعالى يتبيل آمين يا رب the messenger firmly believes in what has been revealed to him from his Rabb and so do the believers. They all believe in Allah and his angels and his books and his messengers. They proclaim we make no distinction between any of his messengers and they say we hear and we obey. We seek your forgiveness our Rabb and to you alone is the final return. Allah does not require of any soul more than it can bear and afford. All good will be for its own benefit and all evil will be to its own loss. The believers pray, our Rabb, do not punish us 
if we forget or make a mistake. Our Rabb, do not place a burden on us like the one you placed on those before us. Our Rabb, do not burden us with that which we cannot bear. Pardon us, forgive us and have mercy on us. You are our only guardian. So grant us victory over the disbelieving people, over our enemies. I remind myself and you, my brothers and sisters and elders, that this is the same Rabb that we worship. And he is Arhamur Rahimin. And he is Azizul Hakim. And he is Rabbul Alameen. And he is Razzaqud al Quwwatil Mateen. And he is Maliki Yomid Deen. And he is Waliina Fil Hayati Dunya wa Fil Akhirah. The question is Do we trust him? It is as simple as that. It's not a matter of, of saying it. I know everyone, everyone will say, yes, I trust Allah. Sit in the front of the mirror, ask yourself, do I trust Allah? And if I trust Allah, what is the evidence which I will show to Allah and say, this is proof that I trusted you? We have to show it. We have to show the answer, not only say it. That is the challenge. And only that will be accepted. ربنا فاغفر لنا ذنوبنا وكفر لنا سيئاتنا وتبفنا مع الأبرار ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكونن من الخاسرين لا إله إلا أنت سبحانك إنا كنا من الظالمين رب اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين My brothers and sisters, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to grant us his obedience in this life and Jannah in the Akhirah inshallah we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive all those who have passed away. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to fill their qubur with nur. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless them and to save them from the qabar, from the azab of the jahannam. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to help us and help our brothers and sisters, khususan and especially in Palestine and also in Sudan and Yemen and wherever they are being oppressed and being murdered and so on. Ya ibadullah, rahimakumullah, inna Allah yamur bil adli wal ihsan. وَإِتَاءِ ذِي الْقُرْبَى وَإِنْحَانِ الْفَحْشَيْ وَالْمُنْكَرِ وَالْبَغِيْ يَعِذُكُمْ لَعَلَّكُمْ تَذَكَّرُونَ أُذْكُرُ اللَّهِ يَذْكُرْكُمْ عُذُوا يَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ وَلَا ذِكْرُ اللَّهِ أَكْبَرْ وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمُ مَا تَسْنَوُونَ قِيمُ السَّلَامِ